Welcome back. Uh, we continue our Nolitaire playthrough of Liberty or Death. So if you haven't seen the first video in this series, I recommend watching that first. Um, but just a reminder, playing Nolitaire here means that we're playing all the bots against each other. Uh, there are no human players here. I'm doing my best to run the bots as they're written and just see what they do. Even if that means they make suboptimum or sometimes even uh, downright dumb <laughs> plays. Okay, we're about five cards in. Let's carry on. So the next card is the notorious traitor Benedict Arnold. At first I thought uh, the Patriot bot is up first and I thought for sure they were going to jump at this. Remove one British fort and two British cubes from one space to casualties. Uh, I mean, Boston would be a nice target there. You know, really stick it to uh, General Gage. Uh, get rid of that fort and a regular editori uh, to casualties. Or maybe even take Quebec and just completely uh, remove the British entirely uh, from that province. Uh, those would both be interesting moves. Um, but the Patriot bot doesn't take the event. Um, nowhere in the event or command box there do we have uh, any positive result for this event. So Patriot Bot is not going to take this event. So we carry on. Patriot Resource is greater than zero. They're at one currently. So yes. Rebel Cubes plus Leader greater than active Royalist Pieces in space with both. No. Bradley would place a fort. No. Or a D6 is greater than the Underground Militia on the map. Well, I rolled a four over there, and there are two underground militia on the map, so the answer to that is yes, so Patriot Bot will rally. So, uh, place a fort uh, with a space with four or more Patriot units. There's no such space, so carry on. Then place militia first at each fort with no other rebellion pieces. Uh, there are none. Then if any Continentals are available, there are. At the fort with the largest number of militia already. Okay, so that means Massachusetts, uh, as, as usual. Okay, so they're going to put four militia, that's the population plus the two forts, into Massachusetts. There we are. That costs one resource, and now Patriot Bot is broke. So that means stop doing the rally and go to Persuasion. So that's what they'll do next. Persuasion requires that... Uh, Rebellion has control, and there be underground militia in the space. The only two spaces uh, where that was possible is New Hampshire and Massachusetts. So, Patriot Bot uh, flips two militia, one in New Hampshire, one in Massachusetts, and collects two uh, resources for doing that. They are out of propaganda markers, um, so none are placed. Um, Persuasion tells us, uh, place one propaganda and less none available. So Patriots are now going to continue on with their rally. The next priority says, in the Patriot Fort space with the most militia of those already selected for rally, one space has been selected for rally, replace all militia except one under underground with Continentals. So they will, re so um, Patriot Bot will replace the uh, militia, four militia in Massachusetts with Continentals. Uh, once again, that has the result of basically plopping some new Continentals down in there, but in the uh, in while doing so, gaining some resources through persuasion um, by putting in some militia and then activating them and then removing them and replacing them with Continentals. Okay, so that doesn't cost the Patriots anything because they already selected that space and paid for it. Next priority is the fourth bullet point. If Patriot Ford available, yes. Place militia in the space with no Patriot Fort and most Patriot units. Okay, right now that is uh, New Hampshire. So Patriot Bot will pay one resource to put one militia in New Hampshire. There we go. Next thing is then place militia first to change control, then where no active opposition within each first in cities within that in highest population. All right, so they want to change control by placing militia here, and there's lots of places where they could do that. Uh, Georgia, obviously that would change control if they went there. There's nobody there. Charlestown, that would that would change that from British control to neutral. Uh, Norfolk also would change from British control to neutral. Uh, Philadelphia would also change it to neutral. 
um, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, those would all change. Connecticut, Rhode Island would change by adding one. Okay, so lots of possibilities. But we're told to prioritize the cities. Well, first, where there's no active opposition, but none of those have active opposition. Within each first in, um, in cities. And within that in highest population. Okay, so the cities we have to choose from are Charlestown, Norfolk, and Philadelphia. So Patriot Bot will choose randomly from those. Patriot Bot rolls a 2-2, two, two, which gives us Philadelphia. So uh, Patriot Bot pays one resource to put a militia in Philadelphia, changing control there to uncontrolled. Okay, and they are now out of money, so that will be the end of their turn. Indian Bot is up next. They could take the event or a limited command or they could pass. So take a look at the event. Remove one Patriot Fort to casualties and two Patriot Militia to available from one colony. Okay, well, Indian Bot really likes the sound of that. If we look at the third bullet point under event or command, event removes a Patriot Fort. Yes, it sure would. Okay, so Indian Bot is going to target Massachusetts, which has the only Patriot Forts, and use the event. So we have the first casualties of the war. The Indians destroy a Patriot fort thanks to the help of Benedict Arnold. So cumulative rebellion casualties goes up to one. Uh, forts don't stay here, however. They are returned immediately to available. So that will go right back uh, to the available spot. And, uh, well... Massachusetts doesn't look quite as strong as it did before for the Patriots. They also removed one militia there, because the event says uh, to also remove two Patriot militia to available. There was only one there, uh, so the Indians had that removed as well. Okay, on to the next card. Next card is Benjamin Franklin travels to France. The French are first eligible, um, and they rather like the look of that event. French resources plus three, Patriot resources plus two. In their event or command box, the um, fifth <laughs> bullet point, event adds French resources. Sure does. Okay, so the French will take the event. British bot can take a full command and special activity. So looking at their priorities, um, they do have greater than zero resources. They're at nine right now. Um, there are more than 10 British regulars on the map, but the rebels do not control any cities. So, no. Available British regulars greater than 1d6. Well, there's one available British regular. Um, so no matter what we roll, that will be uh, less than or equal to a d6 roll. So the answer is no. Um, two or more active rebels in a space outnumbered by British regulars and leader. Well, the only space really with two or more... Um, active rebels and British are, is New York Colony. But um, that doesn't work because they're not outnumbered by British regulars plus a leader. They're outnumbered by British cubes, um, but there's only one British regular there, so they're not outnumbered by the regulars. Okay, so the answer there is no. <clears throat> so British bot wants to march. All right, so first thing I did is I use the priorities here to decide uh, which pieces could actually move. So looking at the first bullet point, lose no British control, leave last Tory and war party in each space, and last regular if British control but no active support. Okay, well that meant that most of the British regulars on the board um, had to stay put. You see down here in the south, there are British regulars, but uh, there's British control with no um, active support there. So uh, British bot wants to keep those regulars there, uh, presumably to do um, some future reward loyalty and, and move those into support. Um, for these, uh, for Norfolk, they can't remove one of those regulars because they would lose control if they did that. Not so with Philadelphia, though. They don't have control of Philadelphia, and uh, according to the uh, priorities, um, those two regulars are available to move. It doesn't say in the priorities to make sure that um, 
control is not given over to the rebellion. It just says lose no British control. And so moving those two regulars would not lose any British control, although it would give um, rebellion control uh, to, of, of Philadelphia. <clears throat> so those two regulars are available to move. And one regular there that I've marked with the pawn in New York City could also move. Can't move the other regular because that space is not an active support. Uh, similarly with New York Colony, Boston, and Quebec City, those regulars can't move because those spaces are not an active support. So the only pieces that can actually move here are the two regulars in Philadelphia and that one regular uh, in New York City. So um, look, carrying on with the March order here, moving the largest groups first, add British control to up to two cities, then colonies within each first world rebel cubes, then highest population, use common cause. Okay, we're in cities, so we can't use common cause. Well, that seems to suggest that what the British bot is going to do is simply move that British regular from New York City into Philadelphia to take control there. Um, so that's what British bot is going to do. Okay, so British bot now has control of Philadelphia once again. Um, like I said, there are no other regulars on the map that are available to move. However, uh, it is possible to march in place in order to activate underground militia. So that would be a possibility as well, because uh, for the March Command, we're told um, the last bit there, activate one militia for every three Br British cubes. Okay. Well, that does mean, by the way, that the British will activate one there. They've already paid for that space. But there are no other spaces on the board with um, underground militia and at least three British cubes. So there's no other place for them to march uh, this activity. However, uh, this round, sorry, although they still do have a special activity available. So let's see what they do. Since the British did not use common cause, we follow their flow chart up into skirmish. So they would like to skirmish if possible. Um, so first in West Indies, that's not relevant right now. Uh, second, remove as many rebel cubes as possible. Um, there are no spaces with rebel cubes and British regulars right now. Only Massachusetts has uh, rebellion cubes and there are no British regulars there, so they can't skirmish there. So third bullet point, remove one rebel piece, first, last rebel in space within that first in the city. Okay, well, skirmish only allows them to remove active militia, so it has to be a space with active militia and British regulars. The only two spaces uh, where that's the case are New York and Philadelphia. And by the priorities here, we're told to select a city first. So British will skirmish in Philadelphia to remove one Patriot militia. And that will be their turn. The next card is Frustrated Shawnee Warriors Attack. And Indian body is up first. Uh, the event says for the Indians, place a war party and raid marker in Virginia, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. But Indian bot is not interested in doing that. Um, in our priority list here, uh, the answer to all of those is no. So they're not going to take the event. So support plus a D6 is greater than opposition. Yes, um, support is at 4 and opposition is at 10. So it actually doesn't matter what we roll on a D6. The answer to that will be no. So they'd like to raid, but we've seen this before. They want to raid, but they're broke, <laughs> right? And um, <clears throat> raiding costs money. Even if they would be able to plunder while raiding, uh, they can't raid without the funds up front uh, to do so. So if no raid possible, instead gather. So they're gonna come down to gather. And gathering they can do while broke, so long as they choose an Indian province, because first Indian province is free. So they can gather in one Indian province for free. Okay, so they can do this so long as they choose an Indian province, Indian reserve province. Okay, so place villages where room and three, three or more war parties. That's not the case in any Indian reserve province. Then place war parties at villages. Okay, well, there's only one village, and that's in the Northwest. So. Indian bot will use their one free gather to place a war party in the Northwest. That was a free action, and they can take a special activity if they'd like. Uh, they'd like to war path, but they have zero resources, so they're going to trade instead. So um, trade in the village space with the most war parties, first requesting resources from the British. 
So there's only one village space, Northwest. So Indian Bot is going to attempt to trade in the Northwest by asking the British for resources. Trade requires that Indian Bot activate an underground war party at a village space, so they've done that. And now they're asking the British for resources. Um, the instructions here say for the British bot, if Indians request trade and Indian resources less than British resources, which is the case, the Indians have zero and the British have eight resources, um, roll a d6. If the roll is less than the British resources, offer to transfer resources equal to half, round up, the number rolled to Indian resources. Okay, well, the problem is they, the Br British bot rolled a one. Okay, and that is less than their resources because they have eight. So they should offer to transfer resources equal to half that, round it up, which would be one. But that's an absolutely asinine thing to do <laughs> because trade says that if the British say no, then you activate an underground war party in selected province and add one resource. So, so the Indians get one resource either way whether the Brits decide to trade or not. So the British deciding to trade one resource, all that would do is mean that they lose one resource and the Indians gain one. But if they say no, then the British lose zero and the Indians still gain one. So it's, it's, it's absurd, really, for the British to say that they'll trade one resource. Um, I actually... Uh, got into a conversation over on Board Game Geek about this with the um, with several people, but including the designer of this game, Harold Buchanan. Um, and and I had suggested that this needs an errata that the the, the bot is not correct here. Um, but uh, Harold Buchanan said, "Well, just use some common sense when using the bots." Um, I, and I I don't like that answer to be honest with you, uh, just because I think bots should play. Um, as seamlessly as possible with as little interpretation as possible. So um, in this case, I mean, just playing literally uh, by what the bots say, the British are going to lose one resource and give one to the Indians. So as uh, stupid as that is, that's exactly what the British are going to do. Patriots are up next. They could take the event or a limited command. The event for them says remove three Indian pieces total from Virginia, Georgia, North Carolina, and or South Carolina. Uh, but there are no Indian pieces in any of those southern colonies. So that's completely ineffective. So they're going to take the limited command, probably, because they have some resources, so they're not going to pass. Okay, Rebel Cues plus leader greater than active royalist pieces in space with both. The answer is no. Rallywood plays a fort. Yes, actually. Two spaces possible. New Hampshire it finally has enough militia there to place a fort. And Massachusetts, uh, Patriot Bot could replace that fort that was destroyed by the Indians uh, with the help of Benedict Arnold earlier. Okay, but this is a limited command, so they're going to have to choose one or the other of those. So let's see what they come up with. Now the priorities say first in cities, within that in highest population. Well... The two spaces we're choosing between are New Hampshire at one population and Massachusetts at two population. However, I don't think that makes the choice for us in this case, because it doesn't say first in cities, then in highest population, as though that's the next order of priority. It says first in cities within that in highest population. So I read that as saying to select cities, and then if there's a choice among those cities, go with the highest population. Okay, but we're not giving any priorities other than that. So since we're not selecting a city here, I think we're gonna have to do this randomly. Okay, so Patriot Bot rolled a 5-2. Um, following that down, they ended up choosing Massachusetts. So in Massachusetts, Patriot Bot will replace two of those Continentals with a fort. Since this is a limited command, Patriot Bot can't select another space. But there are potentially other things they could do with this rally in that one space. Um, they could replace any militia in a space containing a fort with Continentals. Um, but they don't have any militia in that space, so um, they're not able to do anything more in that space with rally this turn. So that's the end of Patriot Bot's turn. 
So when the next card was revealed, Winter Quarters came up on top of the deck. So we will now pause and do a Winter Quarters round. For Winter Quarters, first we check Victory. Um, if any faction has met its victory conditions, the game ends. Okay, but every faction's victory condition requires the difference between opposition and support to be more than 10. And right now, the difference between opposition and support is six. So no faction is at victory right now. So the next thing to check is supply. So we do the British supply phase first. British cubes are in supply if they're in a space with a British fort or in a city with British control. Okay, so looking over the map, the British control every city. So all the cubes they have in the cities are within supply. And there are three forts outside of cities, one in Quebec, one in South Carolina, and one down here in Florida. So all those pieces are in supply. That leaves North Carolina, those two Tories there, um, that lone Tory in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and the three cubes up there in New York Colony. Those are the only British pieces out of supply. So looking at um, uh, the supply phase here again, if not, pay one resource per space, Shift space one level toward active opposition or remove those cubes to available. Well, uh, Br British bot says that they're going to pay in spaces where removing British would prevent reward loyalty or allow committees of correspondence. All right, well, the British need, in order to do reward loyalty, they need control of the space, at least one regular and at least one Tory. Okay, so that's North Carolina out and Connecticut, Rhode Island out. So New York is a space where the British would like to reward loyalty. They have control, they have one British regular, they have at least one Tory, so they could do, do reward loyalty there. Okay, so they're going to pay one resource to stay in New York. The question then is, will they pay to stay in Connecticut, Rhode Island, or North Carolina? Well, they can't reward loyalty there, so they're not going to do it for that reason. But the only other reason is if leaving would allow committees of, co committees of correspondence. Well, Committees of Correspondence requires rebellion control and at least one Patriot piece. Okay, well, leaving North Carolina would not allow Committees of Correspondence because there'd be no rebellion control or pieces. And same thing goes for Connecticut, Rhode Island. So British bot is fine with losing those pieces uh, back to available. Okay, so the British supply phase, British will pay one resource to stay in New York, but they will remove the Tories from Connecticut, Rhode Island, and from North Carolina. Patriot Bot supply phase is next. We're told that Patriot Militia and Continentals are in supply if they're in a space with a Patriot Fort or a colony or city with rebellion control. All right, well, looking at the board, um, the militia in Norfolk and Philadelphia are not in supply because Patriots do not have control there. And uh, same thing goes for New York. Those two militia are not in supply because the Patriots do not have control there. Everywhere else, they have control um, where their pieces are. So every, everything else is in supply. So the question is, will they pay to stay in those places? Well, actually, it's not a very interesting question for Norfolk and Philadelphia because there's only one piece in each of those. And uh, we're told... Um, if pieces are not in supply, pay one resource per space or remove one for every two total Patriot units there to available. It's not that clear on this uh, guide, but if we look in the rule book, it's, it's made clear that we're supposed to round down. Okay, so in the rule book it says Patriots may either pay one resource per space or remove one for every two total Patriot units there, rounding down to available. So suppose the Patriots just say, no, we're not going to pay in these two spaces, even though we're not in supply. Well, okay, remove one for every two rounding down. They have one piece in Norfolk. Half of that is half a piece rounded down. That's zero. They remove zero. Same thing in Philadelphia. So they get to stay there. They don't have to pay anything, and they can stay in those spaces. New York is a different question <clears throat> because they have two pieces there. So they would have to remove one of them if they decide not to pay. Okay, so looking at their... Uh, priorities here, Patriot Supply, pay only if removing Patriot pieces would change control. Okay, well, the British have control of New York, 
So removing one of those militia uh, would not change control. So um, Patriot Bot's going to say, no, we're not going to pay for any of these spaces, but they get to stay in Norfolk and Philadelphia anyway, and they'll simply remove one militia from New York. So French supply is next, but that's really uninteresting because all the French are back in France. <laughs> okay, so we skip right over that, and we'll go to uh, Indian supply phase. So um, if no village is Indians place a village. All right, well, they, there is a village on the board. It's, it's up in the northwest there. Okay, so um, war parties are in supply if they're in a space with a village or in an Indian reserve province. If not, pay one resource per space or move them to the nearest province with a village. Well, once again, the only interesting space on the board is New York Colony, where there's that one war party that's not in supply. There's no village there, and that's not an Indian reserve province. All the other war parties are in the Indian Reserve provinces, so they're well in supply. So the question is, will Indian bot spend the one resource they have to keep that war party in New York, or will they move it back to the Northwest, where they have a village? Okay, well, looking at their um, bot instructions, pay supply, first more necessary to prevent rebel control, then more gather could place a village. All right, well, moving that war party would not cause any rebel control, and they certainly couldn't place a village there with simply one war party. Okay, so they're not going to pay to stay in New York. They're going to move that war party back to the Northwest. Battle in the West Indies would be next, but that's not currently relevant because the Treaty of Alliance has not been played, so the West Indies is uh, closed. So we move on to the resource phase. We do British resources first. The British get resources uh, as follows. Forts plus population of non-blockaded British-controlled cities, plus five if they control the West Indies. Okay, no one controls the West Indies yet. Um, the British control every city, though, with a, a population of eight, and they have four forts on the map. So they get 12 resources. They had six, and now they're all the way up to 18 resources. Flush with cash. Indian bot gets resources next. Um, they're not going to be quite as lucky as the British. They get half the number of villages rounding down. Well, they've only got one village on the map. Half of that rounding down is zero. So Indians stay at one resource. Patriot resources are next. The Patriots get resources according to the number of forts, plus half the number of rebellion-controlled spaces, not including the West Indies rounding down. All right, well, the Patriots control, or sorry, rebellion control, of um, three spaces, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Virginia. So half of those rounding down is one, plus the number of forts, that gives them three. They had one resource, now, they had one resource now they're at four. French resources are next. They get two times the squadron blockade markers in the West Indies because this is before the Treaty of Alliance. All right, well, they have three. Uh, they're maxed out there, the French squadrons waiting there in the West Indies. So they get six resources, twice that amount. So they were at six and now they're at 12 resources. We're on the support phase now. Uh, British bot decides whether or not to reward loyalty in any spaces first. Uh, so as we, as we recall, um, British bot can build support using reward loyalty in British controlled spaces with regulars and Tories. All right, well, there's several spaces where this is the case. Quebec City, New York Colony, Boston, New York City, um, North Carolina, excuse me, South Carolina, and Savannah, all have British control, at least one regular and at least one Tory. Um, and none of those are at active support. So uh, British bot would, would love to do reward loyalty in all those spaces. So we have to figure out which spaces it's going to choose. So here are its priorities. First, where fewest raid and propaganda markers. Okay, well, New York Colony has a propaganda marker in it, and Savannah has two propaganda markers in it. 
All right, so we'll put those two aside for now, and we'll see if British Bot will reward loyalty in any of the other spaces. Uh, within that, for largest shift in support opposition. Okay, so where could British Bot get the largest shift in support minus opposition? Well, New York, obviously, they can shift that twice um, and gain a total of four support minus opposition, but there's a propaganda marker there, so we're ignoring New York for now. Um, everywhere else is already at passive support, except for Savannah and South Carolina. Savannah, again, we're putting to a side now because it has propaganda markers. So it looks like South Carolina is the correct choice for British bot to start rewarding loyalty. No propaganda markers there, and it can gain a total of four support minus opposition there by shifting it twice to active support. So that's where British Bot is going to start. Shift South Carolina to active support for two resources. So the next thing they would do is select New York City because it has two populations, so they can gain two support by shifting that to active support. And then they would select either Boston or Quebec City They've got plenty of resources, so they're clearly going to go ahead and do both. So, um, British Bot is going to use Reward Loyalty to shift New York, Boston, and Quebec City to active support, spending three total resources. So now British Bot has to deal with New York and Savannah, which have propaganda markers. Well, the priorities tell us first where fewest Raid and propaganda markers. So they're going to deal with New York first. So the question is, will they spend one resource to remove the propaganda and then two resources in addition to shift that space to passive support? Remember, there's a, a shift limit of two, a maximum of two levels uh, shifting toward active support. So they can't shift it all the way to active support. They can only shift it to passive support. Well, they certainly have enough resources. They're at 13 resources. So yes, they will. Shift New York, um, remove the one propaganda for one resource and then shift it twice, spending two more resources uh, to passive support. And now Savannah is the last space for British Bot to deal with. It would cost two resources to remove the two propaganda markers and then another two resources to shift that space to active support for a total of four resources. But BridgeBot, again, has still got plenty of resources. They have 10, so they will definitely spend those here to shift Savannah to active support. So the British now have total support up to 16, but their resources are now down to six. Okay, Committees of Correspondence is next. We see if the Patriots want to spend some resources to encourage opposition. Uh, we've, we recall that patriots may spend resources to encourage opposition in rebellion-controlled spaces with patriot pieces. Um, every one resource removes a raid marker. Once no raid markers, shift one level toward active opposition. Okay, there are no raid markers on the board. So the two spaces where they could possibly do this are Virginia, which is rebellion-controlled and has patriot pieces, and New Hampshire, which is rebellion-controlled and has patriot pieces. They obviously don't want to do it in Massachusetts because that's already at active opposition. Okay, well, it would cost one resource each to move both of those to active opposition, and the Patriots have four resources, so they couldn't, certainly can't afford it. So we check their priorities. It says first where fewest raid markers, then for largest change in opposition minus support, not if only raids removed. Okay, so it looks like they are going to spend the two resources to shift New Hampshire to active opposition and Virginia to active opposition. So the rebellion has now pushed opposition up to 11. The Patriots are down to two resources. Okay, well, the next thing is the redeployment phase. We start with leader change. And so we look to the first faction on the next event card to make a leader change if possible. Well, the next event card is Merciless Indian Savages, and Indian Bot is up first. So the Indians will make a leader change. So they go from Brant to Corn Planter. 
Um, as I was looking at this, I thought, well, the leaders really haven't come into play at all this game. But then I, I realized that Gage should have come into play um, because his ability is first shift of reward loyalty is free in his space. And earlier in this winter quarters round, the British bot did reward loyalty in Boston. Uh, so the first shift there, actually they only shifted it once, but that should have been free. So I gave the British bot back one, one resource for that. Okay, but Indian bot will now change leaders. Corn planter is now the leader of the Indians. It's now time for leader redeployment. The Indians go first. Um, and so now Corn Planter is their leader. He wants to go to a neutral or passive province with two or more war parties and room for a village. Well, there's only one neutral or passive province with two or more uh, war parties That's and room for a village, and that's the northwest where Corn Planter already is. So he will simply stay there. Next to redeploy its leader is uh, French bot, but Rochambeau has not uh, entered the colonies yet, so there's no place for him to go, but he'll, but to stay there and available. So the British uh, redeploy next. They want to redeploy Gage to the space with the most British regulars. So that means Gage is going to move from Boston to Philadelphia. Patriot bot redeploys next. And General Washington wants to stay with his Continentals, so he will simply stay in Massachusetts. Next is the British release date. So we release, uh, we move pieces to available from unavailable for the scenario instructions uh, for the British. So looking at the scenario instructions for uh, people numerous and armed, we see that uh, after the first year, the first winter's quarters round after 1775, uh, the British get six regulars and six Tories. Okay, so I've already moved them from unavailable to available. So the British now have nine Tories and six regulars available. The next step is lowering French naval intervention, but that's only relevant after the Treaty of Alliance. So we'll simply skip that. On to the desertion phase. So in this phase, the Patriots must do their desertion first. They remove one in five militia and one in five continentals from the map, rounding down. Indians cho choose the first militia and the first continental, then Patriots remove the remainder. Okay, well, there are eight militia on the map. So removing one in five, rounding down, that means they'll have to remove one of those. And there are only three continentals, so they won't have to remove any of those. So uh, one militia will have to go and the Indians get to the side which one that'll be, looking at their priorities. Um, it says first from village spaces, there are no militia or in any village spaces, then to remove most rebel control. Uh, okay, then it's obvious that it's gotta be Virginia. Moving that one militia will remove control from Virginia. So Patriot desertion removes one militia from Virginia, losing control in that space. Tory desertion is next. Um, so we remove one in five Tories from the map, dropping fractions, which I find a very puzzling way to say that. <laughs> Everywhere else they've said rounding down, you know, throughout this entire, throughout this entire sequence it says rounding, rounding down, but here suddenly they say dropping fractions. That's kind of strange. Even in the rule book, by the way, at this point, it says rounding down. <laughs> so I don't know why they wrote dropping fractions on this card. But anyway, it uh, comes to the same thing. Remove one in five Tories from the map. French choose first, then British remove the remainder. Well, there happen to be exactly ten Tories on the map. So the British are going to have to remove two of them. So the French are going to choose first. Okay, so looking at their priorities, loyalist desertion. Remove a Tory so as to change the most control possible. Okay, well, removing one Tory from anywhere won't affect control at all. Then the last Tory in a space with most population not, er not already at active support. Okay, well, every space with exactly one Tory is at active support. So that is irrelevant. 
Okay, then it just says then elsewhere. So I take it that uh, the French bot will simply choose randomly at this point. So um, they rolled three, two, and that gives, um, of the available spaces, that gives us Savannah. So uh, Brit British bot will have to remove one Tory from Savannah. The British choose the other Tory to remove, and their priorities say remove Tories to change least control if possible without removing last Tory in any space. Okay, well, uh, removing any of the Tories won't do anything to control, but there are three spaces with two Tories, so they can at least uh, avoid removing the last Tory in those spaces. So there's Boston, uh, New York Colony, and Quebec. So um, they chose randomly, rolled a 3-3, three, three, and that gives Boston. So British bot will remove one Tory from Boston for loyalist desertion. So finally, we're at the reset phase of the winter quarters round. Um, and I just simply did all this. Uh, remove all the raid and propaganda on the board. All factions are now eligible. Casualties go to available. Militia and war parties are now underground. We reveal, reveal the next card and resolve any event on the winter quarters card. Okay, so all of the... War parties and militia are now underground. There's no propaganda on the map anymore. And uh, looking at the event on the Winter's Quarters card, it says West Indies conflict goes the other way. Reduce the larger of cumulative rebellion casualties or cumulative British casualties by half the distance rounding down during their reset phase. Well, okay. Um, the difference is only one. Cumulative rebellion casualties is at one. Cumulative British casualties is at zero. Half that difference is half, rounding down, that's zero, so no change. Okay, so nothing interesting happened there. All right, well, I'm going to end this video here. Seems like a good spot. Um, if you're enjoying watching uh, this Nulliter playthrough, um, you know, do the usual things, like subscribe, comment, etc. Um, I'd like to continue on making these videos. It's a lot of fun. Um, once again, I have lots of other things that might interest you. Um, other games I can play, Nolitaire, uh, other AI bots that I've created for different games, um, and other kinds of interesting things. So if you like what I'm doing, please uh, like and subscribe. All right, I'll see you next time.